Okay, if we are ready. Did you eat? Yes. Did you drink? Anyway, if you feel your tummy fully loaded, maybe it's the right time to talk about load testing. That is why we invited Dr. Svetlin Nakov. Svetlin is uh, probably one of the most famous IT people in Bulgaria. An inspirational technical trainer with more than 20 years of experience in a broad range of programming languages, software technologies and platforms. He has also been a speaker at hundreds of events and author of 12 tech books and trainer of more than 50,000 tech students in software engineering and digital skills. Svetlin is co-founder of several highly successful tech startups and non-profit organizations. Currently, he is innovation and inspiration manager at SoftUni, the largest tech education provider in Southeastern Europe. Svetlin spoke at the first QA Challenge Accepted Edition. Six years later, he is here again. And he will share some of his practical experience as he specializes in QA automation and continuous integration tools during the last year. Your applause for Svetlin Nako! Hi everyone, today I will talk about load testing with the K6 tool and I will describe how to use the JavaScript code to describe your load tests. So I have been already represented, so I'll skip this. I'm a book writer and uh, I'm teaching many software academies, etc. But I'll start my talk with the concepts of performance testing. There is an echo from this screen. Uh, performance testing is about determining whether the software meets the speed, scalability, and stability requirements under expected workloads. And there are many tools and techniques to measure this one. And we have load testing, where we, we just check whether we, we record some scenarios uh, and we check whether they meet the performance criteria and stress testing where we intentionally put a bigger wall than expected to see whether the system crash or behaves um, unstable. So the general idea of this type of testing is to record or write some scenarios, just like I log in, I place an order, I view all the orders, I, I play with the system, and I log out. And uh, this is run after that with several virtual users, which are simulated by the testing software. So we have the execution software with multiple virtual users, for example, 200 or 5,000, and we check what will happen if we have in the real world 500 uh, people who try in the same time to open our website. So tools which do load testing could be a configuration driven like the old tests, but this is very, I will remove the sound here. It's, it's having very, very bad echo. Okay, sorry for this, but uh, tools can be configuration driven, like JMeter, this is the old daddy of the world testing, and tools like World Runner from the era when the world testing was not open source, or code driven tools, the modern tools, which such as K6, which is based on JavaScript, Locust, which is based on Python, and Gatlink, which is similar to where you describe your test as code. So, load testing by concepts examines the performance for a specific expected load. So, if you expect, for example, to have 500 users or 200 users in parallel, uh, we, you, you can simulate this scenario and you run these users. They are called virtual users because they are simulated by the software. You run for, in parallel for five minutes and you check whether the average load time sustains and keeps under 500 milliseconds. So stress testing is when we intentionally put the system under stress, under extreme conditions, 
And the goal is to understand at which level the app can crash. So you can test with 200 or 500 or 5,000 or even 50,000 concurrent connections or virtual users. There is a difference which I'll explain later. So for example, I can have 5,000 uh, 5, users for three minutes and I will see how many of the requests will succeed. This is the general idea of performance, load testing, stress, stress testing. We have also spike testing, soak testing, and many other similar concepts. But today I will represent you the K6 load testing tool. This is a very nice open source tool which is code-based. Code-based is something which aligns very well with the modern trends for DevOps, for uh, uh, code-driven quality assurance, for continuous integration and things like that. Because in the past, the QA was uh, manual clicking with the mouse, and the load testing was something like right-click here, put this, record this, etc. And now, QAs are developers. I believe that most of you already know that to be a QA, you need to be a developer and specialize in the QA and QA automation profession, and no longer clicking with the mouse is still, still runs. So code-based performance testing and code-based testing is the new uh, standard, the new reality. So what is K6? K6 is modern open source world testing tool, which comes from the, this website, k6.io. I don't know why, why my mouse has broken. I constantly have some kind of such, I'm sorry for that, but I don't have a mouse. Shit happens many times, consequently. First with this screen, now with my mouse. And oh, okay, I will use something like mouse, but my mouse pad at the hardware mouse pad doesn't work, but I don't have time to debug what happens. My mouse crashed, sorry for that. Uh, shit happens sometimes, so shit happens many times, but still I cannot, yeah, I cannot click this. I don't know what happens. This is, this one is the, it's opposite. Maybe the batteries, I'm not sure. But you can have the open source and the cloud-based version of this software. It's, uh, I call it a testing framework, but it's a combination of testing tool, testing framework, and it's based on JavaScript. And the Go language. Uh, you uh, describe your test scenarios with JavaScript, I'll show you how, and you have a local and cloud-based script executor which is based on Go, and it's very efficient, very high performance. It can simulate 50,000 of concurrent connections. It can make a stress test. For example, I'll show you how to stop a certain website from existing. Huh, looks like it's working now. Maybe I'll have a mouse. Finally, yeah, I have it, thank you. So maybe the batteries are replaced. Oh no, it, it stopped again. Maybe the batteries decided to stop exactly now, <laughs> not five minutes ago. So we have a script executor, we have a script recorder, recorder where you can just record the tests and play them again, and the, place has, are, the tests are JavaScript code, and no longer we use XML or some graphical user interface to describe the tests. The tests are code because developers love code and because Q engineers also love code. Oh, thank you. I'll, Anton will give me a oh, very special mouse. I will become an international uh, hacker um, with uh, QA special forces. It still doesn't work, but ah, it works. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's very powerful, and I'll show you. I don't want to lose more time because I was already with this mouse. So it's very easy to plug in your existing continuous integration scripts because it's code based. You just install Node and Go, and you run it. So I'll show you. First, you need to install it. There is uh, Windows, Linux, Mac, etc. versions, standard for every uh, open source software. This, these are the releases. After you install it, you can run a very simple script just like this. This is all you need to perform a very basic uh, test which uh, tests this app. In, in my example, I will test uh, this swap. Sorry, it's not the, the right the right screen, maybe 
I have a very simple uh, um, app, which is uh, something like this. You can add uh, some, some users here, and that, that this is how it works. So it has about add student, view students, and home. And I will check this for uh, performance. It's deployed at Heroku. Uh, and I will use this. So when you install K6, you have a script. Uh, I will have this one, simple.js. And it just says, please use this app and test it. So I type at the console, K6 run script script.js. So K6, wow. <laughs> Something next uh, shit happens again, uh, but I will try again. I don't know what happens. K6 runs. OK, K6 run. Uh, maybe I'll need some. Yeah, k6 run simple.js. But what was different in my previous example, I don't know. But this is what we have. So we have some uh, measurements which were performed, and this, this uh, script succeeded. It wor worked correct correctly. So we have for 0 0.4 seconds, one virtual user, etc., etc., etc. So I will make this a little bit more interesting uh, by uh, using something like like this one. I will run it with 50 connections. Okay. Uh, so I run with 50 concurrent virtual users, uh, which is slightly different than concurrent connect concurrent connections, uh, but for five seconds. So the load time here is the interesting part. Here it's just like uh, I have in the 90% of the tests, I have a response time under 76 uh, milliseconds. And in 95%, I'm run the response from the server is under 79. So this is very, very, very well. But let's see what will happen if I run 500 concurrent virtual users. So now the users are running and uh, creating, and it needs some time to, to complete. So see, the response type is now increased. So it still run, runs well. 300 milliseconds for a response for a web app, it's pretty well. So what will happen if we put 5,000 users? Now, maybe the server will not be able to handle this very fast. So I have these 5,000 uh, connections. And you can see here that they are decreasing slowly because they need time. So now I have more than two seconds. Do you see? So if my performance target is to respond under one second, this test should be considered failed. And you can uh, configure this in your UI. So I will go a little bit ahead. I already demonstrated how it works. It's very, very simple. You can start in just three minutes. Install, write a simple script following the tutorial, how the, the getting started tutorial, and you run it, and that's all. And you can find, for example, that if you get, if you have a cheap hosting in a Bulgarian hosting company, if you run this, the site will stop. For example, I will demonstrate this to you. I have my personal website, nakov.com, hosted in a Bulgarian very, uh, in, in a cheap hosting. So if I repeat the same, the, the site will just stop. No longer Nakovcom runs. You can open from the, um, your mobile phone. It's gone. And after three minutes, it, it will <laughs> resurrect. <laughs> so this is called a stress test. So I can prove that this hosting and this WordPress site cannot survive 5,000 concurrent connections in the same time. And it was not designed for that. 
it is not, I didn't pay for that, right? If I have a good uh, hardware with many RAM and CPU, etc., etc., it will survive. But this is a kind of shared hosting, shit, bullshit hosting. So it not be because of the company, because I won't, don't, don't want to pay much. So see what happens, 26 seconds <laughs> to response time. It's fairly gone. So this is what I need, wanted to show you. So this is an example. I can run 50 virtual users for 15 seconds or 3,000 virtual users for 30 seconds. And this usually foods most web apps. I, I mean most web apps which are not designed for scale. You cannot foot like this GitHub, for example, or Microsoft.com, but you can foot the most uh, web apps and beware because this might be illegal in some countries. Maybe in Bulgaria also, especially if you try with the um, elections website, for example. <laughs> so I want to show you the recorder, how you can write the scripts. Because every, most of you can write JavaScript, most of you can follow the tutorials, and these, these are just simple get post uh, things, but it's easier to use the test recorder. The test recorder is a simple Chrome plugin, which I have already installed. And I can uh, run the plugin just to demonstrate you what happens. K6 browser recorder. I start recording. And I, for example, open wikipedia.org. And I check whether I have an article about me or not. Looks like I don't have it, but I have an article about my brother, uh, <laughs> Preslav. So I just say cancel, and this data will go in my cloud account, which is typically a paid service, but I use some kind of trial limited uh, storage. So I can generate the code and save these tests. So see what we have. We have the requests, one after another, and see we have this sleep. It's quite important when you uh, do load testing to have sleeps because normal users, they don't food the server. They don't uh, make requests uh, with five milliseconds be between the requests. They usually open a page, think a bit, find scroll, fill a form, submit, and they have some kind of sleep. So this should be typical if you have a virtual user. This is the virtual user behavior. But this is the visual builder. I can edit these uh, things here, uh, change the query parameters. I will not get inside. But this is a script. So this is the code which I can copy here and run. So, so you can see the, the target uh, parameters, some other configurations. But generally, they say, please make an HTTP request to wikipedia.org. Then, please make a search request to wikipedia.com, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is just an idea how the te test recording tools work. And they work the same, one, the same way in all the mm, test recorders for uh, web-based testing. E even in Selenium, we have similar tools in, and in other tools. So we can edit these recorded scripts directly in the cloud or with their visual editor, or you can just download the script and edit yourself. Because I usually don't want to have automatically generated code. It's usually full of shits, of things that you, you don't need, of um, things like additional headers for the browser and things like that. I usually try to uh, get the essence of the um, test scenario described with less code, just like, like these examples, for example. This is an example of very simple. I have requests without too much headers because I don't need them. If I, if I need them, well, just like sending cookies, etc., I can make this uh, more complex. So, but, but generally, you can record tests and you can generate JavaScript code because the concepts of modern testing is that it should be code-driven. Unit tests are code-driven. Integration tests are code-driven. If you record tests with Fiddler or with uh, some other tool, they can be turned into code. Selenium tests are code-driven. So if your tests are code, 
they can plug in your existing continuous integration uh, system, so you will be able, able to deliver the modern DevOps practices such as CI, CD, etc. So this is the quote. I already dem demonstrated this. And I just wanted to explain that users in the real world, uh, they work with some kind of uh, pauses, with waits, with delays. So a user opens a page, waits, then op opens another page, then waits, they fill the forms, etc., etc., etc. And this is what a virtual user should do. So uh, some people uh, cannot uh, mm, differentiate between requests per second and virtual users. So you, you usually have one to 10 ratio. So if, if your server can uh, process 500 requests per second, this usually means that you can have 5,000 concurrent users, right? Because users don't uh, work too fast. They have delays during their work. So this is how it works. You take a get, then sleep, then, then uh, make another get request, then sleep, then another, etc. And finally, they fill a form and post. This is something very, very simple. Here I don't deal with cookies, with sessions, with login, etc. This will complicate my examples, but generally this is the same thing. And Everyone who knows how to write tests uh, in the, for example, integration tests or web-based tests should be aware of cookies and other things which preserve the session in web apps. So we can make checks in K6. These are basically assertions. Assert that this request returns a 200 HTTP response and the return body is student's registry. The heading is there. Because if the request fails or it, it just uh, returns an error without an HTTP error code, it, you will be able to check this. So how does this work? Uh, I have here a, a very simple script with some kind of tests. And I can say checks. Dot JS and maybe 5,000, it's too much, I'll run 50 virtual users. So if I run this test, typically five seconds is, is not enough. I don't recommend this. Please use at least one minute or a few minutes. But for the demo, if I have five tests by <laughs> five minutes and my session will be will go, gone. So this is how uh, this test has passed, have passed. And if I do something uh, very aggressive, like 50,000 of sessions, uh, a, a place where JMeter will just crash, because JMeter, the old daddy of the performance testing, is Java-based software, which is based on Java threads. So it will try to allocate 50,000 threads simultaneously, and it will crash. It will say out of memory. But this works, K6 and modern tools work with asynchronous sockets, so they can survive 50,000 of connections on just a normal developer laptop, nothing special. 16 gigabytes RAM, nothing interesting for four core, uh, four core CPU, etc. So see what happens here. Looks like the entire test passed. And yeah, and it responds fairly well in, in just seven seconds for 50,000 virtual users, which is very, very well. So what's next? We can define the so-called thresholds. Thresholds uh, define what are our, our acceptance, performance acceptance criteria, criteria which uh, for example, we want 59% of the requests to finish within 500 milliseconds and 99 of them to finish within 1.5 seconds. This is how we define this. And later, we go with the script. So finally, I will, I will show you how we can fully test this student's registry. So we'll open the home page and wait for two seconds. Then we'll open the student's page, page and wait for another three seconds. So this is my scenario. I open this home page and wait two seconds. Then I view the students and wait 
some more seconds. Then I open this page. Then I submit the form. So, but I have weights, and I will run this with 200 uh, parallel virtual users. And this is a real world scenario. So if this survives with a good response time parameters, you can be sure or mostly sure that it will survive in the real world if you have 200 real users from all, all over the world. So I have uh, this uh, code uh, shared here in, in GIST, but I, I have it and I want just to show this for you. So I have uh, this, the first test, which just opens the home page and sees whether it's 200 OK. The HTTP response then gets the students page, then it opens the add students page. It, these are, uh, in fact, two sequence of two scenarios. So I use JavaScript so I can implement any logic that I want by code. For example, I can uh, generate unique username and unique password and register with it. And in subsequent executions, I will not have a login conflict, for example. So if I run this test, uh, just a moment, I, I have, I don't want to, to write this from scratch uh, to save some time. So I read, I run this script with 200 uh, parallel uh, virtual users for 10 seconds. Uh, and let's see what will happen. In the start, because my database is empty and there are no users, the response time will be pretty OK. Uh, but over the time, because I don't have paging here, the records will be too much <laughs> at some, uh, some time, and this will slow down. For example, see what will happen with 200 thousands of users. Uh, I will have two, uh, hmm, I'm not sure how much, but a lot of uh, new records in the database. And see, I have failures. I have requests which fail. Maybe, maybe the Heroku, the platform, detects some kind of food and rejects some of the requests. Maybe the resources of the server sites are not enough. But it's not important. If I'm a QA, my job is to find the problems. So I have found with the scripts that this website have problems, and it cannot survive 20, 100,000 of virtual users which follow this scenario. Open the students, wait a bit, uh, add a new student, wait a bit, etc., etc., etc. So I have failed tests. The colors here are very, 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 very ugly. I don't know why. Maybe if you see this, it's hard for me. But generally, you can see that the response times here uh, can be something like 29 seconds for a scenario, etc., etc., etc. And it still runs, but runs slowly. So depending on this criteria, which I have defined at the start, this test fails. If I increase this for, for example, 50 seconds and, <laughs> and more, it might pass, but not fully. So this is the idea behind the code-driven tests, performance tests. And I believe that K6 and similar frameworks will be a very powerful tool in your arsenal as a QA automation engineers and try it. It will take you five minutes to try. It runs very, very, very easy. So I'm open for questions. That was my talk. I believe I meet the timeout criteria. We have from Peter. Uh, First, uh, Thank for this talk. K6 uh, frameworks works uh, really useful. So I would like to ask two standard questions for that type of frameworks. First, uh, is it possible to play multiple scenarios at the same time? For instance, you have a login scenario, you have also sign up scenario. And uh, you say, OK, I want uh, at this moment 30 users to log in and 20 to sign up. 
Do you it know? is. It is. You, you, you have many way, ways to implement this. The first is just to have a script on the Linux shell to run this in the same time. But uh, the second is because it is JavaScript, you can run yeah. asynchronously several requests. So, so you can do it yourself. But I believe there is a standard options which I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking this. about the framework. Uh, it's, it's clear that mm. you can work around that. <laughs> Uh, but uh, does the framework uh, support it natively? And the other thing is actually, can you shoot at uh, the server from different locations at the same time? Again, uh, natively from the framework. Yeah, with their cloud service, you, you can. Uh, so they have a kind of so-called world zones. So you can add zones, and mm -hmm. you can stress test from Europe uh, in the same time from US. This is Amazon-based. So you can add here uh, a zone. I believe they have Frankfurt, for example. So you, you can. Uh, the idea, like most open source companies, is that they have very good product for free, open source, but such advanced features are available uh, when you are a su subscriber, and this is fair. Yeah. Thanks. There's another question there. We have a Questions: If I want to support 2,000 simultaneous users, how would to define the number of the user groups with increasing them during the test? Ah, you mean that you will need some time to 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 fix? See, if I run 2,000 in the same time, this will make a spike on the server, right? Because I will have a lot of requests in the same millisecond. So usually in load testing, we have we distribute this load for five seconds. So there is additional parameters. I should check which one was it. How many time we need to start from zero to two thousand simultaneous users? So yes, we we can we can do this if this was what the question. Uh, minimum will start with a few users, and the goal is to finish with two thousand. But how many minimum tests? should be run between a few and two thousands. Yeah, Playwright. Playwright is it's different framework. It's very, very well asynchronous. Uh, but it, it's alternative to Selenium. I, I don't believe that it's a competitor to K6. OK, I believe I don't have more time. So I will be around. And if someone wants to talk with me personally, I'll be maybe outside or around. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, break, coffee break. See you at uh, half past two.